What's good everybody, it's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different, back with another video. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video, as you can see we're inside of Studio One. It's going to be a first of many Studio One videos. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to do Studio One videos again, because I do use it, and you want me to do some tutorials, so if you want me to do more tutorials, please leave comments in the description below, or oh, description, leave comments below what I know, and let me know what kind of tutorials you guys want to see, so I can make the type of tutorials that you guys want, because I'm going to be doing a lot with Studio One, especially tutorials, so yeah. So for all my studio one people out there watching this is for you and i will continue doing stuff for you anybody who else is kind of just curious about studio one hopefully this will help you guys out as well but before we get to you can follow me on instagram twitter and soundcloud mr different tv and also subscribe to the channel hit the bell notification you all know what this is so today i'm gonna teach you guys how to just um something simple and teach you guys how to record inside of if uh, if inside of Studio One. Now, I did do a video of this in FS Studio, and I thought it was oh, it's just it would just be nice just to do one also inside of Studio One. And Studio One is pretty simple when it comes to setting up audio for recording. Basically, the same principles, but uh, I'll show you how so I do direct monitoring, turn it on and off, and how to you know stuff like that as well. Just in case you want to know how to do that, how easy it is to do that. So let's get right to it. So here it is. When you start up a new uh, project, this is what you get and it's just blank. So if we want to go ahead and add an audio track for recording, all you need to do is either right click right here, go to add track, or you press the shortcut T, which I always do, and it'll bring up the track. Now you get to pick what type of track it is for audio, instrument, automation, or even a folder. So I do audio, we're doing one track, you can select your color, and then you also get to choose your format, mono, stereo, all that good stuff, you know, depending on how you're recording or what you're recording and what microphone and stuff you're using. So we would do that, and then you get to select your inputs. I only got one input, and then you get your output, so don't worry about that. So now we click that, it makes us a track. And if we go to the mix right here, it already routed it to the mixer as well. So that kind of helps us out as well. So that's good right there. So we'll just bring it up a little bigger. So as we can see, this is a audio track, but you're not seeing no input because I got to go into here. Make sure it's on my end. Let's just show you the inputs that you have. You have input one, input two, and you can also set up more if you got more inputs. So input one, and I got hit the arm button. So to arm it, and then you can see that I have signal going into the actual things and that's good right there so like you said i got signal now if you want one thing i like about studio one is the fact you can check your levels before you start recording and a way to do that and how i always do it is if you hit this input button it'll actually show you the incoming signal so you kind of adjust your levels to make sure that you got just the right amount of level i always try to aim below negative 6 db but since i'm doing like an audio cache right here it's gonna be a little bit louder but you kind of use this to kind of judge your levels which is really good if you are if you have an interface like a 2i2 that just has that little ring that goes green yellow and green yellow and red this can just show you like how loud you're actually going so you get the proper level so when somebody tells you try to aim between this you can kind of get just the right levels going into your uh daw so that is dope right there now once you got your level set you got your track arm what if you want to hear yourself back and you don't have you know you want to use like put some plugins on and you want to hear yourself back in real time well all you got to do is press this little button right here which is the direct monitor button we hit that now you're going to hear like a you hear it get louder but as you can see yeah you can just tell that you know it has a little delay to it because i'm using the direct monitoring plus the buffer size of my um interface and like i said if you want to change your buffer size you gonna say lower buffer size equals more accurate and more real-time recording uh higher buffer size just equals in more processing power you can use and more plugins you can use at that but it will give you a big delay so that's good for mixing like i said all you gotta do is go to studio one and let me show you that one more time if you go to studio one and then you click options then you can navigate to audio setup you know general just go to audio setup and here you can change your buffer size right there like i said higher is more for mixing and mastering and then lower is more for recording in real time but as i said be careful how low you go depending on your interface and your cpu and all that because you will get gl glitches pops crackles all that good stuff that you don't want and it'll throw you off just as bad as having to delay to it so now we can record something all we gotta do is hit the record button and if you want to count off there's a little pre-roll button right here you press that and it'll give you like a little pre-roll count off and you can also go to the settings and actually determine like how much of a pre-roll you want how many bars and all that good stuff and, and also change out your clicks and all that so that's really good i say a lot of custom customization inside of studio one when it comes to doing stuff like this and then if i hit the record button Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different. Once again, showing you guys how to record inside of a DAW. Very quick, simple, and easy, like that. Bam. And there you go. Then you gotta hit stop to stop the cursor. And then all I can do is go back. I can press play, and then you should hear it back in real time. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different. Once again, showing you guys how to record inside of a DAW. Very quick, simple, and easy, like that. 
And yeah, there you go. Now it's been recorded and that is good. Now let's say one more thing. There's one more cool feature inside of um, Studio One that I really like that I don't see a lot of people talking about. It's say you want to record with plugins directly. Like say you want to commit to those plugins. Say you want to you want to use a compressor, but you don't want to put a compressor like on here. You want to kind of just record with the compressor and have it printed onto the mid onto the channel. You can do that easy by just going right here. It should be right here. If you go like the little up button, it'll bring it up here. You can actually put a compressor on your incoming signal and it will actually record that compressor. So for example, I'm just gonna go in here just to show you. And I'm gonna pick a compressor from yeah, not Universal. We'll do uh native instruments, use a uh LA two way. Now I'm just gonna compress the shit out of this. As you can see. The incoming signal is being compressed. I still sound normal, but when I record, it's actually going to be having this compressed signal going into it. So now if I record now. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, a.k.a. Mr. Different, and I should be compressed all to hell. So let's hope it is. Now, if I go back, bring it back. If I replay this. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, a.k.a. Mr. Different, and I should be compressed all to hell. So let's as you can hear, it's, since I'm using kind of a smooth compressor, it's not really that noticeable, but you can definitely tell that it is being compressed. So if you want to compress your signal going into the DAW and kind of commit to that, you can do that with Studio One really easy. And I really like that function right there because that's the way you can get your kind of sound already set up and then you have less to do in the end. So some people like to work that way. It's more of an analog work style, uh, analog way of working. Like if you ever worked at Analog Gears or a big studio, that's how they usually work. So if you want to kind of keep that kind of workflow and tradition and all that, you can definitely do that inside of Studio One and it's really easy and it opens the world of possibility. It may, might make you think a little differently when you're you know, doing stuff. And that's a great way to kind of get the sound going in already where you want it. And then at the end, you can just kind of tweak it a little bit and add your effects and sparkle and shine to it. So there you go. So yeah, that's simple simple way of recording inside of F uh I keep saying F Studios let's not do it there's a quick way of recording inside of Studio One in different ways and I'll show you how to turn on direct monitoring and record with effects and also commit to effects going into DAW so if you got any more questions please leave in the description below let me know what you guys want to see so I can make videos about what you want because I don't know unless you tell me I'm just gonna be making videos until you guys start requesting stuff and then I'm gonna start doing those as well so yeah please let me know so I can make those videos so if you enjoyed this video thumb it up if you disliked it because you're you're a hater you can definitely thumb it down y'all know who it is your boy slim aka mr different not motivated by the money but the like subscribe and views i appreciate you guys like always and i will catch you guys in the next video have a good one everybody